how long have you been in the basketball skills training industry? I've been in the basketball skills training industry for 29 going on 30 years. Amazing. And on my end, I have talked to thousands of people in basketball, soccer. I've yet, I've, I've met maybe one or two people that have 20 years of experience. <laughs> so you have so much experience under your belt. Um, so many different things that you've seen since you started your business. And what was the thing that initially got you into the skills training business 29 years ago? Well, the thing that got me into skills training business is that I was an assistant college basketball coach. And I used to stay after practice and do one-on-one -on -one training with the players after practice. And over time, we would see really good results with those players, uh, them applying the things that we worked on into game situations, um, players that I did individual workouts with after practice became college All-Americans. Um, some of them got opportunities when they finished college to play professional basketball in the NBA or overseas in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so during that time, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to be a college basketball coach for my career or where I wanted to go with basketball long terms in terms of my career. And so I found that the individual workouts was more of my niche that was something that I was very good at, developed a great relationship with the players. Uh, um, you know, my head coach uh, was adamant about me continuing to work, do those workouts with the players. Uh, he also allowed me to implement a early morning workout program to where I could bring players in at 5 a.m. Uh, every Monday morning. Uh, and do workouts with them. And we found that that set the tone for the week in terms of players coming off the weekend and then coming in early Monday morning and getting really fine tuned up. We found that, that set the tone uh, for the week. So that particular year was, I was, uh, was, was 90, 91. And I was working at, as an assistant coach at Navarra junior college. Mm -hmm. And that was actually uh, the junior college that I played at. For a year and and, uh, and was able to go back and work for uh, my coach, who's a Hall of Fame coach, Lewis Orr, uh, who I still talk to on a weekly, almost daily basis. That's awesome. Uh, but he, he gave me that opportunity and the flexibility uh, to work with players individually. And I found that that was my niche. And so after one year at Navarro College, and that year we – we were the highest scoring junior college in the, in the nation. We set a record. We scored 149.5 points a game during preseason and 116.1 points a game during conference. And, and, and uh, we ended up tying for the conference championship with Tyler Junior College. And, uh, and then from there, I got a job offer at Eastfield College, uh, which was closer to my hometown, closer to my mom. And uh, they offered me the job to be an assistant basketball coach. Um, and then also they provided an opportunity for me to work in the counseling department as an academic advisor. And then I had to train also to become a career counselor as well. And, um, and I was there for three years um, and Coach Flickner, who's also a Hall of Fame coach. Now, both both those coaches were Hall of Fame coach, and I worked for and played for both those coaches. And uh, and he gave me the same opportunity, a lot of responsibility, a lot of flexibility, uh, a lot of opportunities to work with players outside of practice. And uh, over that three-year period, uh, we had three players that were – uh, all American players. Um, 
And so that's when um, I also got married and started a family my last year at mm -hmm. Eastfield College. And the day that my son was due to be born was the day that we were supposed to leave to go to New York for the national championship. Wow. And, and fortunately he came two weeks early. <laughs> oh, nice. Got to do both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But long story short, I, 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 I um, wanted to, my goal was to be there for my son, be a part of his life. When I was at Navarro Junior College and a lot of four-year coaches came in, would come in and I would talk with them about the life of an assistant coach or, you know, at the college level, which is what I was contemplating on what I wanted to do. And, you know, one of the coaches just told me, you know, about what type of grind it was and, and how much of a sacrifice it was and how he did not get to be there for his son's little league basketball. He, you know, he, he, he misses all of that because, because of the travel on the road and, and the schedule. And so I made a decision um, to, after my son was born, um, to resign from coaching college basketball. And I took a job uh, with the Richardson Independent School District as a community liaison. And I was doing my basketball skills training part-time. Mm -hmm. And so when I was, was doing that part-time and um and so in around 19, what, about 1985, it developed, it had developed into a full-time business in terms of the number of clients that, that I had that was being referred to me. And um, people were offering me opportunities for sponsorships, donations, telling me, hey, you need to get your 501c3 because um, we like to provide some sponsorship for you, donations for you, so you can work with even more kids and that type of thing. And what summed it all up and what made me make that final decision is the accountant who helped me set up my 501c3, when I went in to do my taxes, he looked at me and he said, what are you waiting for? And I said, what do you mean? What am I waiting for? He said, do you realize you're making more money part-time doing your basketball training than you are on your full-time job. So he says, what are you waiting for? Right. <laughs> and so that's when I took the leap and I haven't looked back since. That's It'll amazing. Be, yeah. Next year will be 30 years. Amazing. Amazing. So one thing that you said early on, is you said you, you found your niche. I know this is one of the, probably most asked questions that coaches ask me that are new to the training businesses. Like they want to be a trainer, but they don't really understand what their niche is. And they're, they're trying to train four year olds and 21 year olds, like all in the same day. And they just bounce around from client to client. And I'm curious, cause I've, I've never asked anyone this before, but how, good did it feel for you to like know what your niche is and go after that like what what was that feeling like to just be like yeah like these are the types of kids that i want to train and this this is what i want to do like what try to explain what what was that feeling like for you it was a feeling of uh really freedom and what i mean by freedom is that i kind of freed myself up to do what I'm passionate about doing, to do what I'm really good at doing, to do what I'm doing really well. And so I felt that I could just focus on what I'm really good at. Uh, I remember reading the book from Rick Warren, the book Purpose Driven Life. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how your calling in life is basically what you're really good at. And 
other people are going to be drawn to you because that's what you're really good at. That's what you're really impactful in terms of what you do. So mm -hmm. that was the feeling for me is that, man, this is what I love to do. This is what I'm passionate about. Um, um, this is what I'm really good at. And for me to be able to wake up every day and go do something that I love to do. And what's crazy about it, Ben, and, and this is the thing that I think that's um, at this point in my career, I really want to share with younger coaches or skills coaches in general is coming up is that in terms of quality of life, uh, I've been able to work part-time hours for going on 30 years now and consistently make a basic salary or earnings between $100,000 and $300,000 a year, part-time. Part-time. And that's not including grants, donations, and uh, sponsorships that I've gotten over the years uh, that have gone over a million dollars. So for me, life doesn't get any better than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's cool because you, you made a decision early on when your son was born that you wanted to be involved and you knew that if you took the assistant coaching job and stayed doing that, you wouldn't have that same life. Exactly. And funny thing is you're able to work way less hours, make way more money and be way more involved. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's been the most rewarding part of me. I was able to be my son, little league basketball coach from first grade all the way to sixth grade, all the way until he decided, you know, not to play in, in junior high school and that type of thing. I was able to take him to school and pick him up from school um, every day. Uh, I was oftentimes at the meetings that they would have at the school during the day for parents. I was oftentimes the only man at the meetings. <laughs> the, rest were, the rest were women. Right. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're like, what are you doing here? Like, I'm working a part-time six-figure job. What are you doing here? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah. you understood early on your niche clearly had a ton of experience um, doing assistant jobs, working within college basketball. One thing that's really stood out to me about you since, since I've known you, I mean, I've known you for about three months now. Um, it's the thing that we always go back to in every conversation. And it's, it's the thing that you always do in your emails that you send every week. It's, it's the results. So like I've spent years on my YouTube channel talking about why results is really important, how that's like a really big piece to this business. That's how you grow the business. But for you, try, try to explain from, from your point of view, like how results has tied into your success. Oh my goodness. Results, to be honest with you, Ben, is the number one key to my success. Uh, and that actually started, it started when I was overseas in Europe, even before I came back to the States and started coaching college basketball, and, you know, as a result of my mom getting cancer. Um, over, when I was overseas, I was there for four years as a player, and then part of what we had the opportunity to do when you play professional basketball overseas in, in the leagues that I played in is they gave you opportunities to make additional money by going into schools and teaching basketball and doing clinics. And, and, and for me, I think it was after my second year, I had had so much success with the coaching that I was doing in the schools and the clinics. Um, they gave me, a work permit, which uh, which meant which meant I could stay there after basketball season. I could stay there for twelve months, 
because they told me we want you here also during the summer to be a part of developing our young young players in the off season, mm-hmm. and uh, and we were getting good results with that. Um, I, I had my camps went anywhere during the summer when I started doing camps there during the summer, and they was providing sponsorship for those camps. Would go anywhere from like two hundred kids, and I went to uh, Ireland and did a camp in Dungarvan in Ireland, and they had it at on a college campus, um, and it had to be three hundred kids at that at that camp, and wow. it was well organized, uh, well ran, um, and then I was one of the guys that they brought in to help. Uh, direct the camp to help do the different drill stations and all that type of stuff. But long story short, um, the team, well, let's back up. When I got the opportunity to go overseas, it was with the understanding that I would start out at the division three level and have to work my way up to division Mm one. And so as a player, um, after my first year, um, I was picked up by a team called Dungannon, which Tony Hanson, who was the second all, all-time leading scorer at UConn, was the American player on that team. He and the manager of the team, Frank Yolong, they had seen me play but they had also saw me on a TV commercial because my background was special education and I I knew sign language as well. So I was asked to do a basketball clinic at a deaf school. And, uh, and so they aired it on TV. And so they were looking for an American to pair up with Tony Hanson, but they also wanted someone who would be good in the community um, as well as good on the basketball court and be willing to help develop basketball in the schools. Cause Tony had been in Europe for 10 years. He had, you know, he's drafted Mm -hmm. uh, in the NBA, uh, I think he's toys ACL. And so most of his career was spent in Europe, but when we became teammates, he was already there 10 years. And so long story short, the things that they were having, me do in the schools we were getting outstanding results uh with the kids and then some of the the local teams youth teams that they had me work with we were getting good results with them and then they would ask me to do with with their players that were rising young players uh you know they would ask me to work individually with those players players that they was getting ready for the junior national teams and that type of thing and so that's kind of where it started at for me is, is, is when I was overseas. And then when I came back to the United States, um, it continued through college, but that's where it actually started for me. Got it. And then how has that, if you think about like, since you started your local training business and you've gotten, I mean, you've trained thousands of kids. I remember looking on your website Mm -hmm. right after we met, you've helped people make like over a million or a billion dollars. And whether that be like scholarships or like pro contracts. Right. Yeah. And try to try to explain. So let's pretend there's a, a, a 26 year old basketball coach that's a PE teacher that's watching this video that is wanting to get into basketball training and start their up, start up their own local training business. Like if you had to sum it up into like one or two sentences, why, why should they be focusing on results from the very beginning? Cause I know what most people focus on at the very beginning and it's not results. <laughs> uh, why, why do you think that is such a key thing to establish early on in the business? 
because re results is what parents are looking for. Uh, parents are looking for results for their kids. And so you want to establish getting results right away. Also, results is the key as well to your business growing without any marketing, meaning I've gotten so many kids and I still, even 30 years later, and you and I talked about this, when we first met, I don't do any marketing uh, at all. Um, I don't do any ads. Um, at the very beginning, when I first started back in the States and did a, a camp at Navarra College, and this was prior to me going full time and what I'm doing now, that's the only time that I ever did ad advertising, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, uh, did did ads for 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 the camps and for the and, and, and for camps that I did, you know, prior to me going full time. So all of my referrals come from word of mouth, and the key to having a lot of success locally, because uh, as a skills coach, I've coached and and um, youth leads. Uh, I had a chance for one year, um, Lake Islands uh, Junior, Lake, no, Lake Islands High School needed a JV coach uh, when I was a community liaison. So I got a chance to coach JV girls for one year and, 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 and that type of thing. But because I've been able to get results and get results quickly, I've never had to worry about clients. And what I mean by that is that when I've worked with teams and gotten results, uh, those teams, those youth teams would stay with me anywhere from three to five years. Say okay? that one more time because because I don't want people to breathe by what you said. How long do they stay with you? On average, three to five years. That's Got on it. average. I've had individuals that have been with me since the first grade. I've had three students go from, no, four total go with me from first grade all the way through high school. And then two of those students came back every summer and worked out during their college career. So they were, they were with me for 16 years. Amazing. And so results are everything. Right. I mean, that's the, that's, that's been the, main key to my success and it's the it's the main reason why I don't have to market is because of the fact that I you know I'll, I'll give you another a current example is is uh, I was telling you about CC mm -hmm. Jerris who just signed with George Washington University well she's a second generation student in my program OK, the way that I ended up um, connecting with that family was that her mom was a track star in high school and she also played basketball. But she decided her senior year that she wanted to play basketball in college. And a friend of their family who had three kids in their family that I trained referred her mom and dad to me. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, there was a showcase coming up, a college showcase coming up, I think in about four, four weeks. And I told her mom and dad, I said, she's a great athlete. I said, but she's got to get her skill set refined in terms of being able to play college basketball meaning she was going to have to be able to play like a two, three position in college. And she didn't have the skill set for that, but she was a great athlete. And so her mom brought her to me three days a week for four weeks. And, uh, and, uh, and I honed in on doing ball handling drills with her, shooting drills with her and those types of things. And then sent her to the showcase after that. And she got offered a full scholarship at um, William & Mary. 
She got offered a full scholarship at William & Mary. And so that's wow. just an example of how important getting results are fast, but not only getting results fast, but getting results from a standpoint to where it helped her achieve her goal of playing basketball in college on scholarship. Mm. And so parents see that as a return on their investment. Right. I gave you $5,000. You give me a hundred thousand dollar scholarship. Yeah. That's like, if I had those odds, I would be living in Vegas at the roulette table <laughs> 24 so, so, hours a day. <laughs> so, so, so as a result of that, mm -hmm. I became locally known as a guy yep. that if you have a player in that particular situation, you, you need to send them to coach Brown. Right. You know, and if You're anybody can guy. get them ready, he can do it. So I, you know, you know what I'm saying? I became that guy. Right. Go to guy. And, yeah. and I'm curious. Cause like I had a really blunt conversation with someone yesterday about this and I don't think he took it the right way but he's in a position where he's he's doing it as like a side hustle doing basketball training as a side hustle he's he wants to do it full time and one of his biggest issues that he told me he's having he said that he's not getting referrals and i'm curious like i said something very specific to him but i'm curious to to know what you think about someone who is in this business that's not getting any referrals what do you think the real problem is results and that's in fast results because i can't stress this enough the faster you get results and to where it translate and and what I've been doing even since I've met you, Ben, I've been kind of sending you clips mm -hmm. leading up to this so you can kind of see factually what I'm talking about. Right. I've been I've added you to my weekly list that goes out to my parents. I just uh, signed up uh, a young lady uh, about probably about a month ago. And she started out with me doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've since have moved her into group training along with one-on-one. -on -one. She's fifth, yeah, fifth grade, just, just started sixth grade. And so after her first, I would say, two sessions with me, her dad was already seeing results. And and um, and I also went to see one of her games in the in a in a, in a league game. And we were able to see how she was already applying the things that I worked with her on in her in a game situation right away. Um, and so one of her teammates, mom, recognized her improvement and her shooting and 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 uh, pointed it out to the dad. And so the dad said, yeah, well, you know, we got this new skills coach. We've been, you know, we've only been working with him a couple of weeks now, but we've gotten results mm -hmm. already. Well, that mom, a week later, asked me, could she bring her daughter in for an evaluation to see if her daughter could train with me? Came, her daughter came in, did the evaluation. Now her daughter signed up with me. Right. Because so of the you results. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And that's happened thousands of times for you. It's like kids training. That get results. Everybody can see it in the games. Parents talk about it. They wonder how did that girl get so good within this short period of time? And then they all get pointed to you and then you just rinse and repeat with everybody. And, and but the other thing, Ben, I think that's important to point out is that I do this with teams also, meaning mm -hmm. that for many years, um, players who train with me like individually, they would be on like a youth team and the coach would just say, Hey, we're seeing outstanding results. With these other. Let's just send our whole team to him. Let him do skills training for our whole team. And so I had a team years ago, I can 
called them United Ballers of Dallas. And, and uh, uh, that team went on to win the AAU National Championship in fourth grade and in fifth grade. Wow. Um, and those players stayed with me for years. Mm -hmm. I had a high school team that was Lake House High School they were averaging five wins a season. The new coach came in uh, and took over the team. <clears throat> and the best player on that team was a freshman. And she had been in my training program since she was in the fifth grade. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's it. Since she was in the fifth grade. And she was the best player on the team. And so she had mentioned to her coach about how she had been training with me for five years. <clears throat> and the coach came to me and said, is there any way, <clears throat> What's my, any way that I can get my whole team with you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so long story short, we get the whole team. <clears throat> and those girls go from winning five games a year to when they became seniors, they won a district championship. Wow. They was working with me year round. And then from that, I started to get other teams as a result of that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse right. Me. And I'll even poke this a little bit further. So let's say someone's watching this. They're doing it as a side hustle or maybe they're just starting the, the clients that they have aren't referring anyone into them, meaning they're not getting fast results or, or results at all. What do you think that coach needs to change about themselves in order to start getting results? So people start talking about the business. And, and I ask because I remember very early on when I started my soccer training business, like it was almost like a like a light switch there there was this like it all happened where like i finally realized okay i can train these kids all day long but they have to be improving they have to like it the parents the parents need to have this sense of like, wow, this is a really good investment. Like all, all those things have to click in mm -hmm. order for the results to happen. But, um, and I saw how, how that impacted me personally. And, and I, I know most coaches out there, they just straight up struggle to stay in this business for more than two or three years. And it's not a real career. It's like this, it's this vision that they have. And then like they're either not getting results or they don't know how to market and sell. And so the business just goes away. So what, what do you say to someone who's not getting results? What, what do they need to change? First, I think what was important for me is that I, because I knew that I wanted to be in basketball for a career I didn't know early on whether it was college coaching or, or that type of thing. So mm -hmm. I studied and learned from the best coaches in the world. You know, like um, Bobby Knight, coaches like that. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, Roger Thompson, who was with Bobby Knight at Army, he was my coach my first year in Europe. And uh, he gave me a lot of Bobby Knight stuff, books on clinics and camps and drills and all of that type of stuff. Um, um, so uh, Rick Patino, when I was at Navarra College, uh, we had to learn his system in terms of the way he did skills training to develop um, his players, you know, for example, the reason why a lot of his players were getting drafted after like two years 
is because they were so versatile. Mm -hmm. And so I got a chance to learn the drills, the ball handling drills that he did with his players every day. And he did it with the centers, the guards and the forwards. Everybody did it. So therefore, that's why you saw a lot of players from Kentucky who was like 6'8", 6'9", 6'7". They could handle the ball. They could do it all. Mm -hmm. And because he made them do all the drills that the guards do. Mm -hmm. okay, I say that to say this. I use those same drills in my training. Mm -hmm. When I spoke with the coaches, the coaches from coaching staff from George Washington University, when they called me the other day after uh, after one of our kids, after CC committed to them, <clears throat> they told me the reason why we offered her is because of her versatility. They say she can play multiple positions. You know, she can handle the ball. She can shoot it. She can, she can, she can play probably the one through four position, and that's because of the way that she's been developed. Mm -hmm. So I do versatility training with all of my students. Uh, I have a, a a rising. She's seventh grade, seventh grade now. Uh, but since she was, she's been with me since she's in was in the first grade. She's now. ESPN ranked as one of the top seventh graders in the country. Um, and Amazing. yeah. And so, and I'm, and I'm already doing very, matter of fact, I had her training with CC <laughs> um, uh, Monday and she'll be training with CC tomorrow as well with the small group that I have with CC. Right. Uh, but I would say that not, I would say in, in terms of, I don't know if it's so much that they need to change. I think they need to be open and willing to learn the types of drills that get the type of results, get, get results quickly. But one thing, here's what I tell my parents when they're looking to get their kids training to potentially get them a scholarship. This is what I say to them. I say the money is in the skill set meaning that they have to develop a certain type of skill set that is marketable to college coaches. You know, and in order to develop those types of skill sets, mm -hmm. they have to be willing to do a lot of repetition work, a lot of repetition work uh, in order to develop those skills. I tell my students, you have to do something 10,000 times for it to become a habit as it relates to basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would say to to that coach is that if they're not getting quick results, they need to look at specifically what type of drills that they're doing based on the ages of the kids that they're working with and what those goals are for those kids. For example, I have a program called Next Gen. OK, and just for like first grade to third grade kids, okay? I have a curriculum specifically designed for them where they come, they improve, they have fun. It's a great, great atmosphere. And then and then we go to the next grade level, like third through six, and then mm -hmm. you know, seventh grade mm -hmm. through 12th grade. So I have a different curriculum for the different ages that's appropriate, but it's also based on what their goals are because when doing my evaluation, I ask all my students, what are their goals? What are they trying to accomplish in basketball? You know, mm -hmm. what's your short-term goal? And some say, well, I want to make the seventh grade team this year. That's their short-term goal. So we'll put in get we'll put in place a plan to get them ready for seventh grade tryouts. Right. You know, that type of thing. And you know, we have an excellent record of our teams, of our players, and that's a big, that's a huge thing, Ben. Because right now we're we're in what we call preseason training for my program, and a lot of the kids that are in that program that are seventh grade, uh, they're going to have tryouts coming up in say like October. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm preparing them now for those tryouts. Mm -hmm. You see, because that's that's their goal. That's what they want to be prepared for. But but that's the main thing that if coaches are not getting results, they need to look at specifically what type of drills that they're using with the kids that they're working with at the different ages 
And if those drills are not getting quick results, then they need to be open to learning the type of drills that do get results. Right. Right. And what would you say to someone like, let's say they are a good trainer, but their clients just aren't very committed. Like, I mean, this is the majority of people in this industry. What they do is like, they love coaching. They love training, but on the business side, it's like, the client just shows up whenever it, there's no, like, I mean, if someone went to your website and they saw the prices and, and their even like your whole process, like that's, that's very rare in this industry. I mean, obviously that's the sort of stuff that we teach people how to do in our program. Um, but what would you say to someone that's dealing with clients where, you know, they just kind of come and, and train whenever, like, what would you say to that type of trainer? Well, here's what I would say to that type of trainer is that they have to establish a training program that's structured to attract committed families. The families that my average, the average stay in my program is three to five years. Lauren, the young lady I was telling you about, this ESPN rank is one of the top players in the country now. Has been with me since first grade. Well, her dad could put her in any training, any training program that he wants to, uh, you know, he's a former NFL football player, you know, that, that, that type of deal, uh, money and stuff is not the issue and that type of thing. But as a former athlete himself, you know, he knows and values and appreciate good quality training that's going to help his daughter achieve her goals. Mm -hmm. Well, Lauren has told me she wanted to be a McDonald's all American. She wanted to play major college division one basketball. You know, those are her goals. And he see that she's on track with me to reach those goals. Mm -hmm. Cause she, you know, she's making progress every year, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and that type of thing. So that's what I would say to the coach is, just make sure that your program is structured in a way that it's, it's going to attract committed parents. Um, and once you, for example, once you start getting players to come in, when they have, when I have evaluations and sit down and talk to the parents, we talk about the commitment during the evaluation. And that for me, to be honest with you, that's my weeding out process. I asked the parent and asked the kid, I'll say, okay, this is what's going to be required. Are you willing to make this commitment? And I ask them that before I sign them up in my program, mm -hmm. you know, and if they're not willing to make that, make that commitment, then, you know, I tell them, well, this program is probably not for you and that's okay. And we find right. out some kids is more geared toward, you know, recreational basketball, you know, that, that type of thing. And just kind of learn the basics to be able to mm -hmm. enjoy basketball but when it comes to playing basketball at a competitive level, and I, and I tell kids this, so when you choose to play junior high and high school and, 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 and potentially college basketball, you're, you're saying, I want to play competitive basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, now you're competing to get a spot on the team. Then when you get on that team, you're competing to get playing time or starting position. And so my job would be to teach you how to compete and get that spot on the team, how to compete to be potentially a starting player on that team. And it's a process, it's a process involved, it's a process involved in that. It's a process involved in that that you've got to be willing to go through mm -hmm. in, in, in order to accomplish that, you know. And right. so that's established early on with me, but it's also going back to what you always talk about locally. It's also locally known that students who come to my program have to be committed because when they look on the website and see what mm -hmm. the, the fees are at this point and, and, and then they see the results. So they'll know, okay, 
the parents have to have to have to decide and they'll tell their kid, we're <laughs> right. gonna make this investment. <laughs> you're gonna show up for all the training. So make up your mind now that this is what you're gonna do and you, cause you're gonna commit to it. Right. Yep. And it's it's so much easier to get results with people when they have skin in the game. Yeah. Because because imagine imagine the last twenty nine years if you just undersold everything. People could just come and go whenever they want. Like, I think it would have been physically impossible for you to work part time and make between 100 and 300 K per year, over, you know, the last couple of decades. And, uh, and one of the things that I really like that you have that we we've talked about multiple times at this point is it's it's set up to where you have like in season out of season like you, you have these different programs that you run everything has curriculum and it makes it easy for people to stay because one thing you and I've talked about is like you know most trainers can't run a year round business because they're always asking their clients if they want to stay in the program but it's not really a program they're just asking if they want to stay doing lessons. Um, you do it to where like the parents know that if they leave, it's, it's, it's going to be bad for their child because like, they're going to build all these bad habits with their team. They're going to stop right. doing the rigorous training they're doing with you. And then when they come back to you, it's like, they're starting back over. So, so you're really guiding people to do this year round year after year. And the parents realize after doing that, well, yeah, like, why would we ever leave this thing? Like, our, we don't want our child to, to take a step backwards. Like, we want them to continue to get better. And I think that's one of the biggest differences you have versus most basketball trainers I talk to is they're not really directing and guiding the parents on what to do. They're asking them if they want to stay, which is a very different type of conversation like one shows strength in the conversation. One shows like, well, I don't know. Do you guys want to stay or do you want to leave? Like, uh, and most people um, that run this aren't dealing with the type of committed clients that you have. So if you had to boil it down to, to one thing, like let's say, again, there's a, a basketball trainer in their 20s or 30s watching this. Um, and let's say they're they're on the edge of of wanting to do this full time. So they have clients, they maybe have another job, they want to do this as a full time income. What would be your number one piece of advice for that person to go forth and do this as a full time thing? Like I would say, like a business piece of advice for them. Uh, a business piece advice for them is to run it like a professional business. Uh, and what I mean by that is you kind of described it a little bit. I call my basketball program Jeb's Basketball School. And we have preseason training, which is where we are now. Okay. And then when basketball season starts, we have in-season training. So, they know that we have a curriculum for preseason training that gets the kids ready for the season. And then in season is clearly described when they come to us for in because because parents have got to know the value and the benefit of what they're getting mm -hmm. during those different seasons. OK, mm -hmm. in order to invest year round. And so with my program, one builds on one builds on the one thing builds on the next. OK, and so during in season. Their junior high coaches, high school coaches. Are focusing with them on team stuff, they come to me for individual stuff and they come up to they come to me because they're going to get up about a thousand shots. In the four hours, they'll come twice a week, two hours at a time during the week or some may come on Sundays but they're going to get all the extra things that they really need 
during mm-hmm. basketball season to 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 be consistent throughout their basketball season um, and to study rise during the season rather than going up and down, up and right. down like that in terms of their performance. And then mm-hmm. we have postseason training after basketball season ends. OK, so now we have identified, OK, this is what you improved on this particular going into this basketball season, what you did well. Now, postseason, we're going to look at the areas that you need to continue to improve. We're going to focus on that in postseason. Mm-hmm. OK, and then we're doing that in postseason. And then we go into offseason. One of the things that I, I listened to one of the interviews of one of your coaches the other day, I watched one of the videos. And one of the things that came out in that is they were talking about how do you deal with AAU basketball, you know, during the summer. If you're a skills coach, a lot of kids want to go play AAU. The parents say they don't have, they don't have time to do skills training because of AAU. Well, the way that I deal with that is, is I take a different approach to that. I don't see my program as, say, like competing against AAU. Mm-hmm. My program actually prepares my students to when they do go play in AAU tournaments on the weekend, they're with me Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. And you saw we have about 30 kids in that program. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 uh, half of them play AAU. Well, they understand by being in my program Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., doing the type of training that we're doing, when they go and play on their AAU tournaments in the weekend, they're better prepared to showcase mm-hmm. their skills better because of right. what they've been doing uh, four days a week, three hours a day that I guarantee you no other AAU players are doing. Right. And so they understand now, even though we're playing AAU and we're paying for AAU, but it's the skill sets and the basketball IQ that our kids are developing in Coach Pro in Coach Brown's program. That's going to actually, when they go play in show co- showcase tournaments, is going to actually be the key to college coaches being interested in them. My parents understand the value of that. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and and you also figured out. Because this is a common issue people tell me when they they have kids that go play you. They're like, well, I can't, they can't make it to my sessions. But you figured out, well, I'm going to run these 5 a.m. sessions. And that doesn't conflict with anything that they're doing with their AU team. That's where, that's where people have to like, look at what you said and think how can i create a solution for my for myself if i'm running into that problem it's it's really two sided i look at they haven't really established the value with the parents of why they need to stay and how what you do is complementary and it's getting kids prepped for the weekend when they're in AU and then second it's it's a minor scheduling change yeah and and getting people especially in the summer people have more time in the summer um, and I've heard so many coaches tell me in the past, like, well, I can't get kids to come early. And I'm like, you just haven't led and directed parents on why they need to be there. Um, and you've, you've already, I mean, you've been doing that and that works for you. And I think people need to hear that because I think so many coaches are limited in their mind on what's possible in this business. And I know one of the biggest limiting factors is, People honestly think that they can't do it as a year round thing. And it's because from what I see, most of the time it's, it's the lack of buy-in that parents have and that program isn't really structured. They're just coaches are just selling lessons. And that's, right. that's to me, the biggest difference between someone that can do this as a side hustle versus coaches that I work with that make a hundred to 500 K a year. It's like night and day difference. Um, so last last question I have for you, um, and then and then we'll run. Why? So I guess how did you get? How did you hear about me? And then why did you join my program? <laughs> well, I I was actually I was online looking for someone who could help me because at this stage, like I told you, in in my career. I was looking for a way to be able to connect 
with other skills coaches around the country um, um, and who would probably be younger and would be able to benefit from my years of experience, uh, mm -hmm. the success that I've had and that type of thing. But I was taught by my college coach to never stop learning, always be open to learning. You never stop learning. And my, and my college coach is probably, all, he's probably almost 90 years old now. And, and he's still online, you know, looking for, you know, basketball training and still learning and stuff like that. So he taught me that. And then I saw the course that you were offering as well. And the things that you were offering, I said, man, uh, even though I've been doing this for almost 30 years, there looked like some things that he's offering that could enhance what I'm already doing. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I like the whole idea of what you were doing in terms of, cause I had never seen anything out there offered to skills coaches mm -hmm. and uh, cause it's, it's greatly needed, you know, that's number one. And then number two, when I did uh, get your course and start studying your course and talking with you, I've been able to implement some things uh, that I've learned from your course into my program that have already enhanced my program. Mm -hmm. I had gone away from years ago doing uh, upfront payments for the whole year because after COVID hit and all of that type of thing and people was having all kinds of financial issues mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I went away from that and had never even thought about going back to it. And that mm -hmm. type of thing. And then through talking to you and seeing your course, you know, it encouraged me, hey, you know, you know, we're past that stage now. Uh, maybe that's something that I can go back, go back to. Mm -hmm. And as as soon as I went back to it and put it on my website and made it a part of the enrollment process, people signed up for the four year tuition program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, and yeah. I would have never thought about doing that hadn't I connected with you. I would have never thought about going back to that had I not connected with you. Mm -hmm. You know, That's awesome. not, not only that, but just other little things that you said to me that I should highlight, you know, on the website, on that website and that type of thing. And I found that by doing that as well with the new people coming in, you know, mm -hmm. they'll talk to me on the phone and they'll point out some of those things that you suggested that I highlighted, you know, that's also been intr instrumental and, uh, with my with the with the new clients that I've recently got as well, so it's and and uh, and that's just some of the things that I've already implemented. But there's other things too in your course um, as well. Just little things that are or that I'm finding that are are effective in in enhancing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've loved working with you for the amount of time that we've we've had. Uh, and it's always fun for me to to be around people that there, there's always three things that that stand out to me uh, about you. So, like, I could tell right away when we first talk, you're you have a genuine heart for kids, and it's disheartening for me to say this out loud because there's gonna be a lot of people that hear me say this on this interview, but. A lot of people in this industry think very short term and they might watch one of my videos and be like, oh, wow, that guy made $10,000 last month. I want to go do that. And like, sure, like people can make 10K or 20K or whatever they set out to do per month with this business. But if someone's heart is not in the right place, this is not a career. Like it's impossible I've been around enough people at this point. I've talked to enough people where I can sense that within the first 30 seconds. And, and I know for me, that was something I could tell. It's like you, your heart has been in the right place for <laughs> so long. And that's why you have had a really successful career, not a just short-term business. You've had a very successful career with this. That's the first thing. And the second was just how detailed and organized you've been with the results that you've gotten. And I would challenge anyone that's watching this to go to your website. So what's the name of your website again? 
jebbasketballschool.com. Yeah. So anyone that's watching this, go look at that and look at the results that James has. And that's one of the things it's, it's undisputable. So it's like when someone's in this business, this is how I look at it at this point. They're either great at helping kids get results or they really, really struggle with it. It's hard. Like it's hard to find someone that's in the middle. It's like, there's either someone that's really, really good at that or they're unable to do that. And, and they're either not good enough coach or they haven't learned or they're doing something wrong with their business. Um, and that's why I look at the people that have done this for a long period of time, people that I surround myself with, like they've gotten results over and over and over and they can take someone in that's the right fit and just turn on the car and help them get results quickly. Um, so that's the second thing. And then the third, hey, like, it's kind of what you just touched on. It's, it's like, you've been doing this for so long, but you, you've also, you realize like there's, there's stuff to learn that maybe you're not doing that you wanted to enhance. And that was one thing. Like I remember when we first talked, I was like, yeah, there's, there's going to be stuff that we do that you're, you might not be doing it. And to see you implement that like straight away has, is awesome for me to see. Um, Cause I know now that becomes a system in your business. So yeah, man. So I just want to say thank you for coming on here and, and sharing your wisdom. And, and I, I know anyone out there that watches this, like they should be grateful to hear from you and, uh, and they're going to see, be seeing more of you on, on the channel. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah. Awesome, James. Well, thanks so much, man. And uh, I'll be chatting with you soon. Okay. All right. Thanks.